Today, students, we are doing part 2 of chapter 3 for standard 7, Properties of Matter. So, come along. Let's continue the lesson. This video was made just for you. Do remember to like, share and subscribe. Try this activity. Take ice cubes in a glass up to 3 fourths of its height and now observe what happens. What do you see? After some time, you will find little drops of water forming on the outside. Now, how did the water droplets appear on the outside of the glass? What happened? Now, this happened because due to the ice cubes in the glass, the air surrounding the glass cools down. As the water vapor in the air cools down, it condenses and gets transformed into water. Now, we know that air is a mixture of many gases and part of it is water vapor. So, water vapor is present in the air. So, this water vapor which is in the gaseous state cools down the water vapor that is present around the glass cools down and it condenses and it changes to the, its liquid state and gets transformed into water and this water gets collected on the edge of the glass from outside. So, it is this water that collects on the outside surface of the glass. The level of humidity is different in different places. Humidity means the amount of water vapor that is present in the air. So, it is different at different places. Also, the humidity levels change from time to time during the period of a single day also. So, the level of humidity could be different early in the morning. It could be different in the afternoon. It could be different in the evening. So, the level of humidity does not remain the same, that is the amount of water vapor that is present in the air is not the same but keeps on changing from time to time. You must have seen dew drops on blades of grass or even on the surfaces of cars. So, from where did this drops of water come? So, the level of humidity of the air is determined by its capacity to hold water vapor. That is, how much water vapor can the air hold? So, during the night or at dawn, that is early in the morning, when the temperature of the air is low, its capacity to hold the vapor is less. At such times, the excess vapor, that is, it cannot hold a lot of water vapor. So, the more water vapor, the excess water vapor is transformed into water droplets. That is, it condenses because the air early in the morning and uh, in the night is cooler. So, the water vapor changes into water drops and this water droplets collect on the blades of glass or other surfaces. So, that is what we call it as the dew drops. In the afternoon, when the temperature of the air is high, that is, it is very hot in the afternoons, the capacity of the air to hold the moisture also increases. That is, when it is hot in the afternoon, the air can hold more moisture, that is, more water vapor in it. Then, compared to its full capacity to hold water, the proportion of moisture in the air is less and we feel that the air is dry. The proportion of water vapor in the air is high during the monsoon season and in the coastal areas. So, during the monsoon season, air can hold a lot of uh, moisture, that is water vapor. And we find this in the coastal areas, that is areas that are very close to the seaside. So, as a result, these areas, in these areas, we feel dampness or humidity during the monsoon season or uh, areas which are very, very close to the sea. Those are the coastal areas. Now, use your brain power. In summer, wet clothes dry quickly, but in rains, they do not. Why do you think this happens? So, think about it. And to check your answers, you can visit our website at www.jkacademypro.com now, try these two activities. Dip an uncorked inverted empty bottle. Uncorked means an open bottle and it should be inverted in a slanting position in the water in a wide container. Now, what will you observe? You will see that the water uh, slowly enters the bottle and there are air bubbles that come out of the bottle. Now, try the second activity. What change takes place in a balloon on filling air in it? 
first the balloon is very small isn't it when it is not inflated that is the when there is no air in it but as soon as you blow air into it the balloon becomes bigger isn't it so that means air has gone inside and therefore the balloon has become bigger and bigger now let's understand why these things happen now we come to know from the activities above that air has properties like occupying space so that is why the air that was present in the empty bottle came out in the form of air bubbles and water entered into it and in the second one we know we come to know that air also has volume and we earlier we saw in the experiment that air has mass and weight now we all know that our earth is surrounded by an envelope of air now this air is a mixture of very fine particles of some gases dust smoke and moisture so when the rays of light that is the sun rays fall on these minute particles this particle spread the light in all directions so this phenomena or this particular uh, situation is called the scattering of light so when the sunlight falls on any of these particles so the light spreads out and it scatters in all direction so this is called the scattering of light now let's learn about temperature regulation temperature means the amount of heat and regulation means the control of this heat now we know that the earth receives energy from the sun sun provides us not only light but it also gives us heat so from this heat energy is provided so the earth receives energy from the sun this energy is reflected by the earth in the form of heat now the constituents of air surrounding the earth such as the water vapor carbon dioxide absorb a part of this heat and give it to the other constituents of air now we know that air is a mixture of many 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 gases including water vapor and carbon dioxide so when the sun gives out light and heat water vapor and carbon dioxide absorb this heat okay and they transfer it to the other constituents of air the, that is the other gases present in the air so because of this so as a result the earth's surface remains warm and thereby becomes suitable for living world on the earth so it is warm not very hot not very cold so this temperature helps living things to live on the earth now if there were no air on the earth what would happen the average temperature of the earth surface would have been very very low now why would this happen because there was no carbon dioxide or water vapor to absorb this heat so therefore the temperature on the earth surface would have been very low if there was no air use your brain power think about this what would happen if all the air surrounding us is removed taken off and will sound be heard in space find the answers and to check your answers you can visit our website at www.jkacademypro.com you'll get the link in the description box below transmission of sound now what is transmission of sound is transfer of the sound from one to the other now we hear so many different kinds of sounds right from the time we wake up to the time we go off to sleep now all the sounds that we hear reach us through the surrounding air so air helps us for the transmission of sound and that is how we are able to hear now the density of air also changes due to the change in temperature we have we know if the temperature is cooler it the air is more dense and if it is hot air air is less dense in winter the density of air increases that is in winter it is cool so therefore the density of air is more so therefore we can hear the whistle of a distant train clearly early in the morning in winter okay since the air is more dense it is much clearer to hear the sound so air plays a very very important and useful medium for the transmission of sound for the transfer of sound do solve the questions given in the textbook 
And to check your answers, please visit www.jkacademypro.com. The link is in the description box below. This was end of part 2. For a complete lesson, do watch all the other parts.